in the backyard again. Got the middle section of our seat here. Getting ready to pull the old cover off of it so we can use it for patterning. Just want to show uh, real quick how long this thing's been on here that the wood's all dried out. And I'm able to literally just grab the fabric and pull the staples right out. So this is the same way the, the upper one, or the upper half of the back seat was as well. Made it really easy to get the cover off. Thankfully, uh, I think that's just from these staples being in there so long and getting wet and everything, because the new staples seem to go in okay and, and hold pretty well. But, yep, just old, crusty stuff. Watching me? This is my last actual seat upholstery project here. Uh, this is the middle section of the back seat all cut apart and starting to lay it out. And this is the most tedious process of the whole thing is uh, trying to trace out these old pieces of fabric that have obviously taken some shape over time. Trying to get them flattened out so I can get an accurate pattern off of them and drying them all out on the new fabric. As you can see, I uh, took the middle sections and I cut them in half again, so there will be a seam going up the center, just like on the upper section of the seat, that'll get covered up with the, uh, the stripe overlays. So, I'm going to actually try doing a time lapse of this so you can see just how tedious it is without uh, having to endure, I don't know, an hour or so of me messing around with it. But uh, we'll see how it works out and maybe I'll put it in the video, maybe I won't. If it's too boring, I'll cut it out.
each piece all laid out um, and I've got the the two remaining ones just kind of set in place to show where they're gonna go on the on the piece of material again what I'm gonna actually do is cut out the pieces I trace there and then use them as the the final template for those last two pieces I'm just gonna flip them over so I get a uh, a mirror image figure that's uh, a lot more accurate way to get the piece to be symmetrical than trying to trace it out because there is a, a fair amount of guesswork in, in getting these things to flatten out. But uh, yeah, I'm going to start cutting and uh, then we'll get to sewing. My chassis. Chassis doesn't seem to care that I have work to do. Do you, chassis? Is this your new bed? Are you gonna let me work? No? Alright. pieces cut out and I stitched the middle pieces together. Notice I numbered them all one through four and I put arrows on them to show the orientation they go because some of it is not quite so obvious. And outside, the guys are actually out there polishing up the outside of the boat. So I'm going to get sewing here I had a request that I show some actual sewing and how the pieces go together, so I'm going to try to make that happen. So let's see how it goes. All right, so I'm starting with the number two and three pieces, the two middle sections. And uh, I've already got them positioned together. Unfortunately, my chair is on top of them. And I've got my little magnetic guide here set up on the sewing machine a half inch in. For my half inch seam allowance and unless I'm starting in the middle where they're stitched together that's because both of these have a curve at the outside and you want to make sure the uh, the two pieces are centered on each other so that everything lines up because if you start from one end you can you can end up kind of stretching fabric and end up with everything all lopsided so we're going to start in the middle and flip it over and start the middle again and move on. So, yeah, see if I can't get this started here. Do a couple stitches by hand. Because we got a bunch of layers right there to kind of power through, and I find it's easiest to do a couple stitches by hand and then reverse it a little. The sewing machine's got a decent amount of power, but I don't like to load it up too much if I don't have to. are all stitched together. The next step is actually to take this, we're going to fold that seam flat, and then I'm going to run a top stitch all the way along the length. 
lock that all down. Also just make it look nice. Make it a stronger seam as well. And I'm just kind of OCD about clipping all my threads even though they're going to be on the inside of the cushion where nobody will ever see them. That's just me. This one, don't need the magnetic guide. And you know, offset the needle a little bit to the side. I'm just going to use the foot to line this up with the seam. We're going to do a stitch all the way down the full length, about a quarter inch from the, from the fold. this because we got a big pile of material here and a lot of times the feed feet don't want to suck all that material through. It takes a little little helping hand. One seam done. In the end, we got a little bit of excess hanging out, but that's just fine. So there's a single top stitch. Twice now, I've run out of thread on the bobbin, which means I got to go back and fix everything, do it all over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up a bunch of these with thread. I don't know why I find that so oddly satisfying. All right, so I just finished uh, the first stitch on our top panel. And I started looking at how it all goes together. Uh, the original one actually did a French seam with a double stitch, just like I did in the, uh, the middle of this thing. So it's got you know, the twin stitches there. But uh, looking at how this thing actually goes together in the boat, that seam isn't the top of it, at least, isn't even visible in the boat. So I think I've decided what I'm going to do is just do a single top stitch, just like these ones, because uh, you're only going to see one side of it if you even see that side at all, and this is a lot easier. So I'm just going to do it the easy way.
pieces are sewn together. I'm going to trim off the ends, cut out the, uh, the little end cap pieces. Should have this done here pretty shortly. seat is finished and I am totally stoked with how it came out I'm also uh, happy I didn't take all the time to do that double French seam on the top of this middle panel because uh, yeah you can't even really see that seam at all so that would have been a lot of extra work for no real reason now we've got front seats back seats they all match only pieces left to do we've got six of these little chevron shaped pieces two are missing there and i want to redo these uh the black side panels and the the vinyl covered uh pieces on the dash there but the seats are all done so we can go ride in style. And it is hot out here, so I think it's uh, time for us to go hit the water. Real quick, before I uh, cover this thing up for a bit, just want to give a quick shout out to Enzo's Detailing. They were the guys that came out here yesterday and put some polish on this thing. I mean, obviously it's an old boat and 
you know, it's it's pretty rough. The the fiberglass is not in the greatest shape, but man, they they really made a huge difference. I wish I had gotten some better pictures. I mean, especially up up on the top surface here, it was so gray and and just faded out. It looked terrible. And uh, you know, it's it's not brand new now, but man, they made it just so much nicer. Yeah, I mean, there's. To some degree, you know, there's nothing you can do about, you know, all these little cracks and stuff. Like, you're not going to polish that stuff out. Notice I also took the wood strips off there, make it a little easier for them. I'm going to work on refinishing those. But, uh, you know, for, for just polishing and waxing, I mean, look at this. You can actually see a reflection in the black now. There was no way you were seeing any kind of reflection in there before, so... Just wanted to give a shout out Enzo's Detailing here in the uh, San Diego area. I'll uh, try to put a link for them in the in the description. And for now, I'm going to cover this thing up and go get some work done so I can head back out on the water and have some fun this weekend.